Okay. Well, welcome all. And uh, this is the first shot at, at a, uh, a regional meeting for Baki Graduate University alumni, and hopefully we'll have uh, many more. <coughs> Let me uh, introduce myself real quick. I'm Leroy Hurt, and I'm uh, vice president for the alumni uh, association. And we're, we're probably the first region to, to try this regional concept where, where we'll, we will uh, just, just gather uh, alumni in the region since, since we're fairly close to each other time zone wise and, and to do things to, to share and to, to uh, uh, pro provide knowledge, uh, point people to resources, do different kinds of things to, to, uh, to, to help alumni uh, pursue their callings. Um, I was in the army for 20 years and then I was in the corporate world in Fortune 500 companies. And then lately I was with the uh, uh, University of Alabama in, uh, as an administrator and uh, in continuing studies. And, and so now I'm, uh, I'm doing what it takes to, to spoil grandchildren. So we're, uh, we're uh, having a good time with that. Uh, but uh, one, uh, a couple of administrative notes and uh, we're, we're small enough, I think we can make some introductions uh, as well. The, uh, uh, the Alumni Association at large has a, has a uh, uh, annual meeting or, or a gathering on February 16th. Uh, you, you might have been getting some, some uh, emails about it, but, uh, but you're going to have uh, uh, so, so some great content there. There, there are panels being planned and, uh, and presentations. Uh, and, and this is going to, to happen again on, uh, on February 16th. I, I believe it's set to last uh, a couple of hours. So it's, it, it's, it'll, it'll be a worthwhile investment of your time. Also, uh, one, one thing that, that we're trying to do with these gatherings is to, is to uh, uh, so to serve you and to, and to help you in, in your pursuits. So if you have particular topics in mind that, that you think will, will be great for some actionable information uh, and, uh, and, and good for some inspirational information as well, uh, don't hesitate to let me know because uh, we'll, we'll try to do uh, uh, a couple of these each, uh, several of these each year. Uh, we won't try to burden you too much, but we do want to offer some some good valuable content. And so let us know what you might be interested in and, uh, and are more than happy to, to, uh, to work it into the uh, programming. Uh, this, uh, this particular one is going to be related on wellness. And, uh, and that capitalizes on the idea that it's January and we've probably broken our New Year's resolutions already. So, so how can we uh, get back on track thinking about uh, all of our good intentions and uh, a very a real popular subject for us personally as individuals and also for for communicating good valuable stuff to our our clients constituents companies organizations churches etc um, is uh, is the idea of wellness and so I asked uh, Melissa Cox if she would if she would uh, uh, give us a talk on that and and do some Q and a with us and uh, Melissa was kind enough to, to uh, give us the time. She, uh, I, I got to know her at, uh, at church. We, we go together and also at, at the University of Alabama. And she, uh, she has, is, is considered a, an expert uh, in the area of wellness, public health, and anything having to do with, uh, with keeping people in, uh, in good shape. She, uh, she has uh, spoken, written, uh, taught uh, that topic. She lives and breathes it. And uh, she, she's been involved with Baki Graduate University as well in, uh, in, that, in that arena. And uh, uh, she, she has uh, uh, credentials in uh, exercise, physiology, corporate wellness, uh, 
uh, public health, uh, and, and she's been involved in, in uh, the higher education for, for quite a while. So, so she knows the territory that, that alumni have, have navigated. So without further ado, um, welcome, Melissa, and let's, uh, let's lead into it with some introductions of, of everybody on this call. I already introduced myself, and I will go in, in the order that I see your, your images on my screen. So rather than just wait for people to, to chime in, I'll just call you out and, and give you a chance to quickly introduce yourself to the group. Now, let's start with Connie. So I'm Connie Parker, and I am a BGU alumni uh, from 2014, did my MBA at BGU, spent 20 years and as an information technology manager with a major oil company, and another 11 years um, as a director of women's ministry at the church, and now I am twice retired and serving women globally through a program that actually came out of my BGU degree. Um, so I teaching leadership skills to women who are leaders around the world. Great. And Matt? Yeah, I'm Matt Davis. I'm a 2021 graduate of BGU. I, I pastor a church called New Beginning Church here in Houston, Texas. I, prior to, well, really during the time I was pastoring, I was also doing instrumentation technology as, as well as engineering. So I spent 38 years in chemical plants and refineries. That's why I don't have hair right now. <laughs> Andrea. Um, I'm Andrea Mullins. I live in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, I am a graduate, 2007 graduate. I uh, have a DMN from Baki, and um, I was with an international missions organization called Women's Missionary Union for 27 years. Uh, I was the publisher, and also uh, before that, I was a, a, a trainer for Southern Baptist churches throughout the nation. And then um, when I retired seven years ago, um, I enjoyed retirement and then I became a chaplain and I am a chaplain and I absolutely love it. Um, I'm a chaplain with marketplace chaplains. They place chaplains in businesses. Um, so I'm a chaplain at three dentist offices, a Chick-fil-A and a beauty salon. And uh, let's see, I've got one other place um, in a hotel. Uh, so to the employees and I really, really love it. Great. Um, Kathy. Um, hi, so I'm a alumni or I graduated with my master's or the base degree in 2016. Um, and, but I'm a current PhD student. So I'm both alumni and um, student. I um, live outside of the Atlanta area um, and I serve as director of missions and outreach for my church. Um, and I'm actually working with Connie on a fun project that we're potentially expanding her leadership um, training into some capacity building, possibly microfinance and business training for the women globally. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. And where do you all live again? Um, I'm kind of, I'm Northeast of Atlanta. Um, okay. My daughter does go to University of Georgia, though, so I'm sorry, Alabamans. <laughs> oh, okay. that's uh, finally we can was, say that. <laughs> I was, I was at that game, and uh, I, I, I've been banned from future games because I've, I, I've had the opportunity to go to three national championship games, and all three times Alabama has lost. So I, I, well, I, I am officially. I was at the the Super Bowl that the Falcons lost. So yeah. I, I was just, I was literally saying, okay, maybe the Bear Bird curse is over. <laughs> we can, we can root for teams again. <laughs> and uh, Chris, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're, we're just going around right now, just introducing ourselves. Hey, good evening, everybody. So I'm a little late, having a little technical difficulty. Um, is it, it, should I give an introduction? I, I, maybe I've missed everybody. Just, uh, just tell us about who you are a little bit about yourself. Okay, uh, Chris Gray. Sorry, I'm in a little bit in shadow here, um, but I bounce between Atlanta and Philadelphia, mostly in Atlanta. 
Um, let's see, I'm a 2005 uh, BGU alum, uh, originally from Houston, Texas. Um, and I kind of I work at George Power is kind of my vocation. And my avocation is with a nonprofit called Focus Community Strategies that does Christian community development in some neighborhoods in Atlanta. And I have three daughters. Great. So that's me. Terrific. Thanks for sharing. Sure. Um, so without further ado, I will turn it over to Melissa for for some cotton for her uh, what she has to share with us and we'll also have some some Q&A. Okay well thank you thank you for inviting me um, this is one of my favorite things to talk about so um, I did make some notes if you see me referring um, if looking down and turning pages I just didn't want to get off topic and just ramble on because like I said this is my favorite subject so I could go on and on about this all night but um let me share my screen. I don't have a whole PowerPoint um, presentation. I just wanted to um, talk about a few things that I feel like are really important to focus on because I don't know where you are in your wellness journey and I didn't wanna um, get too deep into the weeds with some things if this is not where you were. Um, but I did wanna give you some practical information that you could apply to your own life and to, um, to your workplace if that was what you are here to learn about. So let me share my screen here. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the, di the dimensions of wellness. And in health promotion, we have these dimensions of wellness, um, the occupational, physical, social, intellectual, spiritual, and emotional. And um, these are pretty self-explanatory, but you can see that well, this is actually a wheel. And um, when you spend too much time in one area, then the other areas are out of balance. And you always hear people talking about achieving balance in their life, whether it's a work-life balance or um, whatever. But if you, if you take too much time in one area, then you're going to be off in the other areas. And um, so we try to achieve this balance in health promotion with these areas. And um, the emotional area and what I have on my notes may not be exactly around the wheel, but um, in the same order, but we'll get to all of them. Um, the emotional area is, of course, expressing your emotions and being able to deal with daily stress. And then physical is exercise, um, avoiding harmful behaviors, getting screening tests, eating healthy, nutritious foods, avoiding substance abuse, um, avoiding sickness, things like that. The spiritual is your relationship with God. Um, for the secular world, that might be something different. They may say um, uh, believing in a higher power or doing daily meditation, things like that. Intellectual would be evaluating information, using your critical thinking skills, um, being a lifelong learner. Social would be, of course, interacting with others and having relationships. And then occupational is also considered financial. And um, that would mean, you know, going to work, managing your finances. And there's also, uh, if you were to Google this, you might find that there's, um, eight dimensions of wellness or that two more have been added to this wheel. And um, the two that were eventually added later, according to some people, are the environmental dimension and the community dimension. And environmental, I'm sure that you can see how that would fit in because that's um, dealing with your environment as far as um, understanding how the world impacts your well-being, um, the air we breathe, the water we drink, things like that. And the community is how um, involved you are in your own community, whether that's your neighborhood, your church, your community at large. Um, and that can kind of bleed over into the, um, well, some of the other areas, whether it's spiritual, social, or whatever. Um, 
But I wanted to share this because this is kind of the basis of what we're going to talk about. And I really want to focus on the, the physical because that's my area of expertise. And I feel like the physical one um, impacts so many of the other areas. For example, um, well, they all impact the other areas, but um, psychologically, if you were to um, be really stressed out, then you may not sleep well. And if you don't sleep well, then you would be really tired and then you wouldn't be making good decisions in other areas. Like you may decide, well, I'm too tired to exercise. I'm not going to think about that. Or you're too tired to cook dinner. So you're going to go through the drive through um, so you can see how that would impact the other areas of your, of your life. So um, I feel like this is really an important place to start here. And with the physical, um, I'll just keep that there, but um, the American College of Sports Medicine, the ACSM, they're really our gold standard for setting exercise guidelines. And they suggest that we have 150 minutes of exercise every week. And that also you need to do two times a week with, with at least with strength training. Um, the 150 minutes, you know, needs to be like walking, biking, swimming, something that's gonna get your heart rate up and get you moving and active. Um, now, 150 minutes can seem really intimidating People don't have 150 minutes and they don't expect you to do 150 minutes at one time. In fact, that wouldn't be the best way to go about it. We need to break it down into smaller segments and say you could do 30 minutes, five days a week. And that can still be intimidating to some people. So you could do 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at lunch, 10 minutes at night. And you're still going to get the same benefit as if you did all 30 minutes at one time. And um, another reason I like talking about the physical dimension is because studies have shown that um, being physically active is a gateway to other healthy behaviors. And the reverse is not always true. Just because you start eating healthier doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to um, want to exercise more. But, you know, I'm sure you've felt like, oh, I went walking today. So now I really want to drink a glass of water instead of that soft drink, or it just kind of triggers something in your mind to make you think you want to, you know, be better in each of the other areas. Um, but the best exercise for you is the one that you enjoy the most, because that's what you're going to stick with and want to do more of. And um, one thing I really want to emphasize is that we want to make sure and think about this as if you're not doing anything as a lifestyle change and not just, um, well, I'm going to exercise so I can lose some weight or I'm just going to exercise until I can get my cholesterol down or I'm going to exercise until, um, you know, whatever point in time you decide is your marker for your, um, your goal. You want to think about this as a lifestyle change and something that you can sustain long term. Now, you may not be able to run long term because we all get older, we may experience an injury, or we may, um, you know, need to switch up our exercise. So we want to cross train, and that's another thing. But, um, you know, we want to be physically active for the rest of our lives. Um, the next thing I kind of wanted to talk about with being healthy here is the my plate. And I'm not a registered dietitian, but I do like to eat healthy and cook healthy foods. But um, this is recommended by the USDA, and I wanted just to point this out because you can notice here that half of the plate is fruits and vegetables, and it's recommended that we have two cups of fruits and two and a half cups of vegetables, so it's not, um, you know, a necessarily portion sizes as much anymore, but like um, the portion sizes are in cups. Um, for the fruits and vegetables. And then the protein, I like how they have it here. Um, and it should be five and a half ounces of protein. And protein comes in all different forms. It doesn't have to be beet. And I'll, although here in the South, we usually tend to think about um, what meat are we going to have for dinner and then plan all the sides around that. And we need to try to shift away from that and think about 
different forms of protein that we could have in different sources of protein besides just the meat. Um, and then the grains, it doesn't specify this on the my plate, but whole grains, of course, I feel like are what they're talking about. And the one thing that's missing on here is the water. And if you were to Google the my plate, sometimes it comes up with the little circle um, where it says dairy, but then there's also one with a little water cup up there. This is water. Um, my opinion here is that no food is off limits. All food can be enjoyed in moderation and that we shouldn't be going on a diet. We should be, again, looking at this as a lifestyle change to just eat healthy since we can eat all foods in moderation. So I really would like to emphasize that here. Um, there's nobody that's gonna eat a perfect diet. No meal is healthy um, or unhealthy. No food's healthy or unhealthy. We can eat all things. And um, you don't wanna think about a cheat meal at the end of the week. Try to think more along the lines of, I'm just gonna eat healthy or I'm gonna eat on this new meal plan and stop thinking about the word diet. But think about this meal plan I'm going on to eat and I can eat all foods in moderation, even if, um, I choose to have that piece of birthday cake this weekend. Um, some things I want to move into talking about now are how to incorporate your physical activity into daily life. And then I'll come back to, to this, but, um, I work from home primarily. And so I really have to work into these things here. And so I thought some of you might experience this as well. But um, having a stand-up workstation, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy or expensive, um, <coughs> just standing up periodically through the day, standing to read, like um, if I decide, okay, I'm starting my work day now, I might decide, okay, I'm going to stand for at least 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever it is, and then I'm going to sit down rather than just saying, okay, time to work and then sitting down and opening the computer and starting. Um, I think that's where we just kind of get stuck because we then we are into our work, we're into our writing, we're into our reading or whatever. And we don't realize, oh my goodness, it's been two hours and I've just been sitting here. So being more intentional with um, standing up to do our work. The first stand up workstation I had, my husband made for me. <laughs> I, um, I had a desk that uh, was just a regular old desk and I said I want to stand up more so he kind of built this thing to modify it so I could put my computer on it and then move it up and down so I could stand up or sit down with it so again it doesn't have to be anything fancy um you could um put your printer or scanner in another room so that you would have to get up and go down the hall to get it um Walk your building or walk your house inside and outside. Um, if you're going to work, then going down the hall, up the stairs, downstairs, around the building, outside, just make a path and do it a couple of times a day. That way you're breaking away from the computer, you're getting in physical activity, you're moving around. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to go to a gym, but just trying to be more intentional and more active. Um, of course, parking further away when you go to church, when you go to the store, whatever. Um, having walking meetings um, and on the phone, when you walk your dog, whatever, put in your AirPods, go for a walk. I know right now it's late at night, but um, like we could be doing this and you could be walking, listening to this webinar. Um, just things like that, trying to plan out more. Okay, I'm going to go for my walk and listen to that you know, what, listen to that meeting or whatever. Um, this is a really good one that I started doing way back when, but if you're going upstairs and the office is on the third floor that you're trying to get to, and you don't think you can climb three flights of stairs, just go up one flight and then take the elevator up to the next one. It doesn't have to be all three flights at once. So don't be so hard on yourself thinking it's all or nothing. Um, and be sure to walk the stairs when you come back down. That's just as important too. Um, also don't eat at your desk. <laughs> just like we're not supposed to be couch potatoes, we don't need to eat at our desk. Um, and 
a lot of times we need to stop what we're doing, take our lunch breaks, um, take a deep breath, look away from the computer, even just taking five minutes to decompress during our day can really help us be more productive later in the day, whether it's um, doing some stretches, taking a walk or whatever, um, just to refocus and relax for just a few minutes. Um, so we don't need to have the all or nothing mindset, whether it comes to the my plate or the exercise. Um, big changes can come about because we have had small changes all along the way. Um, just like the example I said earlier about the 150 minutes, you can have 10 minutes here, 10 minutes in the middle of the day and 10 minutes at the end. Um, but if you had that all or nothing mindset, you may be thinking, well, I have to get it, um, get in 10 minutes in the morning. Well, I didn't do my 10 minutes this morning. So I'm just, the whole day's blown. But no, that's not true. You could still get in 20 more minutes later on um, and then that could add up to your 150 minutes later in the week um, also don't wait around for Monday to start your new eating life plan you can start it tomorrow you can start it the next day it doesn't have to be you know oh I've blown it or I have to wait or any of that so the all or nothing mindset I encourage you to just put out of your thoughts um, and also I'll just end with this, but, um, there's no, you know, as I said, there's no bad foods, there's no perfect foods, there's no perfect, um, exercise plans. Nobody's perfect. Nobody eats right all of the time. Nobody exercises all of the time. Um, just like Nobody has the perfect job. Nobody um, leads a stress-free life. Nobody has the perfect relationship with God. Nobody has perfect relationships. So this is another area of your life where you're not going to be perfect, but there's always progress to be made. So focus on progress and not perfection. Thank you for listening <laughs> and for being here. Terrific. Thank you, Melissa. Um, do, uh, uh, do you have any questions for her? Melissa, just a comment. My mother's 93. She lives down the road in independent living, and she gets up at every commercial and walks around her uh, apartment. I'm just so proud of her that she's doing that, and she's in really good condition, but she does that and she just has kind of made it a rule she's going to get up at every commercial and a that walk is around. wonderful my grandmother is 92 and she has just moved in with my mother and I have told my mother do not do everything for her let her continue to do things because um you know I believe in use it or lose it you know get up and do it and move and she's you know really active and this is a hard time of year for her because she likes to be outside. She likes to work with the flowers and be outdoors. So I think that's wonderful. I'm so proud of your mom. Um, Melissa, what, uh, what advice do you have for, uh, for, for the people in the group who lead organizations or, or are, are, are part of a team? Uh, what, what advice do you have to, to where they can be catalysts for, for uh, you know, uh, treating our bodies like temples and and uh, and you know putting that those wellness dimensions into practice uh, for the organization or for the team. Well, I think one thing to do would be um, to be a good example and to be a good leader for others. So people are going to follow what you do. Um, you know, I definitely don't think it's a good idea to go into a corporation and say, we're getting rid of all the vending machines and no more Cokes at the meetings. We're only having water. People are free to make their own decisions. But when people see you doing things and how you lead your life, you know, just as, you know, we are good examples um, for what Christ has done for us. We don't have to go out there and cram it down people's throats. People see us and what peace we have and what joy we have, and they ask us about it. 
and then we can tell them we can do the same thing when it comes to our health. And uh, I see that you've been drinking water. What brought that on? Or oh, I see you've been going walking around the building every day. Um, you know, can I join you in that? You know, just simple things like that. I think leading by example is is really good. And I also think um, when you encourage other people to do it, or when you see them do it, um, you know, encourage them say, oh, that's great. I noticed you've been doing that. Um, you know, good job, keep it up. Um, I think the environment has a lot to do with it. Uh, I did work in an environment, actually at the University of Leroy, and uh, when I was at Alabama, and they, um, weren't as supportive of that as I would have liked them to be <laughs> with some of the walking meetings and things like that. They just kind of saw that as a waste of time. But then when I was at another university, they highly encouraged that. And I loved it because we did take advantage of that. And it was such a better, you know, a healthier environment overall. So I think when you can, um, when you can foster that and encourage that, that's another thing you can do in your workplace. Right. Well, so I, had a, I had a question. Um, I've started because of, I'm a football guy and I follow different athletes and I know several of them are trying to follow the Tom Brady diet. Uh, so yes, that was my son. <laughs> <laughs> which talks about anti-inflammatory. And so my wife has this interest in it and we were reading a couple books on that. I don't know if you could speak to, I know that's only one slice of all of this, but I just didn't know if you had any background research thought on the, the value of an anti-inflammatory thinking, just having that lens with your diet. I haven't done personal research on this level to talk about it, that much, you know, what you may want me to say, but I just know about it from what my son has told me. And then of course, from my lens of um, just having an interest in it and then my background in it. But I will say there are anti-inflammatory foods and inflammatory foods. Um, I don't like, again, I'll, I always go back to this because I firmly believe there's no good food or bad food for you. I think you can have everything in moderation. But I do feel like there are certain foods that will bring you down and make you feel um, inflamed and bloated and well, but um, I, I do think he's onto something. I mean, you can't achieve that level of performance without, you know, good proper nutrition and, um, and all what he's doing. But I do think he's on a whole nother level than what we are. So I think for, the everyday person, I don't know that we necessarily need to be um, that dialed in to every little micronutrient that we put in our body, but um, you can be if you want to be, and a lot of people are, and I think that's wonderful. That, uh, that makes me think when you talked about being that dialed in, uh, it, it makes me think about wellness devices as well, because um, I, bought, I bought one of these fancy smartwatches that, that tracks everything, and I started doing that for a while, and it just dawned on me that this is really tedious <laughs> to, to, you know, to, to track all the information and analyze it, and so now about all I'm doing, it, doing is... Uh, is just tracking the mileage when I walk or tracking number of steps. And uh, um, what, what are your thoughts about, about you know, keeping track of, of all these things? Um, well, I have this on. <laughs> it's a whoop. I don't know if you've heard of that. And I have never had any tracking device until this month. And it's only because my son gave me this one because his old one, this is his old one. And it um, he replaced it with a new one. So um, if you're into that, I think it's wonderful. I love it. Um, now that I'm doing it, I really like it. And the only reason I wanted to do it was to track my sleep. I think sleep is so underrated. I, I love learning more about sleep over the past like two years. I've been really into learning more about sleep. But um, I think it's great if you want to do it. And some people really do enjoy that. Like I think Weight Watchers is has just like 
been so successful because a lot of people like writing down things and tracking points. Some people don't want to track points. Some people like to do other things, but a lot of people like keeping up with um, their number of steps. And some people like keeping up with their number of carbohydrates. So if you like doing that, I think it's wonderful. Track whatever you want to track. If it's going to make you healthier, then I'm all for it. Good. Um, so any... Henry, go ahead. No, I was, just, I was just going to say any other questions. Um, yeah, so I do, I'm pretty good about walking five days a week. I walk four miles uh, in the morning. That use that as my prayer time. But the strength training, um, I do that in the evening. Do you have a recommendation for one? I've been doing the same thing for a long time and I'm kind of tired of those. And, the, and I got in trouble for using five pound weights. My doctor said, because I, tore a tendon um she said back off on that so i don't know if there's some a recommended exercise exercise series or i don't like to do it in a gym so i don't go to the gym i just do it at home and i just have like five pound weights so did she say you're lifting too much and that's why yep. I'm talking? um i'll be honest i don't like lifting weights either but since the pandemic has happened, I've been working out at home and I've actually gotten more into the weights. Um, I, and the key to it is switching it up more often. That way you can gain, like have more gains. Um, and that's with anything. Like if you um, are walking the same path every single day, your body's gonna get used to it. So you need to switch it up, like walk up a hill at the beginning or at the end or in the middle, if you're usually only doing it at the end, switch it up so that your body's like, oh, wait, what's this? Um, so with your weights, I would recommend switching it up, but I would say, why don't you get on YouTube and try to find like a five minute light weights exercise and see if you could do that. Okay. Yeah, that's what I did at the beginning was went out on, tried to find an exercise that would work for me. Yeah. Um, that was about 20 minutes or so. And so that's what I've been doing, but I need, I need some variety in that. Yeah, yeah. There's endless amounts of videos out there, which I think is wonderful. I think more people are exercising now than they ever have. I mean, you've heard all about the Peloton and how they've just taken off. Um, I think it's wonderful that people are accessing things like that now at home and there's an endless amount of YouTube videos to watch and see if you like it before you do it. I mean, like people, I'm not necessarily advocating for yoga because of its roots in Buddhism and all that, but you can learn the stretches and the poses better by watching them in your own house. And it's not so intimidating. Whereas before some people would never think about going to a yoga class because they're going to feel like they're just going to get twisted up in a pretzel and they're not going to know what's going on. So I do think it's good that you can, you know, look and see before you try it. Okay. But you don't have a recommendation for a particular program or anything? No, I think you can just see what, like if, um, see what somebody's certifications are before you try, because most people own the, like most people don't necessarily um, most people on YouTube are just kind of on there because they can make a video and post it. <laughs> so I would make sure it's somebody who's actually a trainer and has some type <clears throat> of certification rather than just somebody like, you know, your next door neighbor posting something. Thank but I think cool. anything you could do would be good. I mean, people just walk around with like my neighbor up the street just walks with weights all the time. <laughs> So I don't think you can really go wrong with what, what, what you do. You just want to make sure if you're following somebody that they actually know what they're talking about. I wanted to mention something. Um, my wife does um, a group uh, exercise class five days a week with Leslie Samsung. She's a, a walk. She does about 500 different walking routines. And what they do, they do it by way of Zoom. She facilitates it. She 
puts on a different tape every week, like you said, changing it up and switching it up. So every week they begin a different walking tape. She has walked down the pounds. She has walked down your sugar, walked down your cholesterol. It has four basic movements, but they put together different combinations. And now she's employed other trainers to be a part of it. So if you if you want to, you can you can zoom in and everybody's welcome. It's about 20 people all over the nation that has joined us every single night during the weekday. Right. So I can could you type so that I can, in the chat? Okay, I can I can say I, I will just send you the numbers because I can't get the link out to everybody. Okay. But I'll send you the Zoom uh, ID and the Zoom password. Yeah, or or even just yeah, just type her name into the chat as well. You know, so okay. we we'll make sure you got the spelling correct if you want to look it up. That would be super helpful. Yeah, and one thing that that I have done um, for the sake of ministry, my background is evangelism. So I did evangelism for several churches, and I like cycling and swimming. Those are the two things I like. Uh, so I started a cycling club the amateur cycling club. We get together every Saturday. Uh, the weather has not permitted the last two Saturdays, but, but we get together every Saturday, 7.30 in the morning, and we just ride. And um, for the first three weeks of the month, first three weekends of the month, we go to the same park. We just go different pathways. But the fourth and fifth Saturdays, we are invited to neighborhoods where the so where the cyclists live, and we change up the route that way. And sometimes it's hilly, and sometimes it's flat. But uh, it's it's been really good, and it's good exercise. I actually have I've lost about twenty pounds since October twenty twenty. Oh wow! I love it. My, That's right. my goal was not to lose, but but it it just happened. And my wife says I'm addicted, but I think she's. <laughs> yeah, I also posted a link to a to a lady. Uh, she her little thing is called Chiseled Faith, and one of the things she likes to do is go to churches as well and, and help them set up, uh, you know, well uh, exercise kinds of programs. So I, I stuck a link there. I I don't know if she's still working or not, uh, you'd probably have to just send a message to her to double check. Okay, I I'll put it in the chat also. Yeah. And uh, I know that for those who are interested in men's ministry, um, there, there's a group, let me put that in chat. There's a group called F3. And uh, it's, it was started in this church in North Carolina. And it's just men get together and they work out, you know, kind of body weight and running kinds of exercises. But it's, it's, uh, they, but it's, uh, it's really geared towards also building fellowship and, and building faith uh, uh, among men. And uh, it's, uh, they have groups are all over the nation. And if you go on the site, you can probably find a group uh, near you. And it, it, it's a lot of fun, but but you need to be prepared to do some serious work. They, they're not. Um, but <coughs> that's that's another way to do it. It's it's a good way to get several men, you know, from your church or from your work group, your work team, uh, out and uh, and in doing these things. Because uh, and, and I, I put that there to emphasize men because I'm I'm doing different group exercise classes and going to them and it's pretty much all women you know for 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 some reason women you know appreciate the, the benefits of that sort of thing and us men aren't aren't as receptive to it but uh, but but this one is is pretty popular with men okay terrific um, any any other questions for Melissa? And uh, any other, if you have, any, if you can think of other resources, and I'll type them in chat because uh, after the recording gets processed, I also get a list of all the of all the texts from the chat. 
and uh, and I'll, I'll send those out as well. Um, I have a, an indirect question uh, as well for that that Melissa might be able to chime in, but that, Andrea, what, when you were in, in publishing, did your company, uh, I think, was it Living Hope? Did uh, New Hope, New, New Hope, Hope Publishers. Uh -huh. did, uh, did you all do a lot of uh, wellness kinds of titles? We did. Okay. Mm -hmm. do, do, yeah, we did wellness titles and from a Christian perspective. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do, do they still do that? Have that um, line of I think they do. New Hope now is a part of a, another publisher. After oh. I left, they had they made some changes a few years after I left. Okay. Um, um, they're a part of uh, Iron Stream Media that does a whole lot of different kind of books. And, well, okay. and I think wellness books are still a part of their uh, publishing plan. All right. So there you go, Melissa. We can get you published there. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's Iron Stream Media. You can go and look. Uh, there. I'll type that down in here in the chat as well. Okay. A any other questions for our presenter? It was a really good, good presentation, Melissa. Very encouraging, and and you made it easy to get hold of. <laughs> well, thank you. I I appreciate y'all inviting me. I was going to say the same thing. I appreciate you taking the time to show the six dimensions. I know physical was your focus, um, but I think it's good to think about all of that, the dimensions that God has put into our lives. And I feel very fortunate. Georgia Power is a company that's, you know, safety. We have folks out on trucks and power lines. So <laughs> safety and wellness is yeah. one of our values. And we actually have a wellness person on staff. And it's been interesting just to see it grow from safety into wellness. And I think we're leaning into those dimensions that you put out there. Uh, and I'm happy to see it. Uh, again, from a corporate perspective, they're thinking about just well-being of employees and um, from that. But I also think it just relates to God's shalom and just that wellness and wholeness and peace in, in all of our life. But the, that diagram helps capture that mentally for me. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I don't know if any DTL candidates have taken on the topic of wellness, but that's an interesting idea of, uh, of connecting the BGU leadership uh, perspectives to the wellness dimensions. And, and, and you know, uh, I'm sure that, that somebody could come up with a, really interesting project. That's, that's a good, good point. Okay. Any, uh, any last questions or comments before we adjourn? I really hope that we all can kind of connect a little bit. Um, I'm really interested in supporting all of y'all and learning more about what all of everybody's doing uh, that live down here in the Southeast and using what you've learned at Baki, it's, um, I find it stimulating as since I'm retired and no longer in the workforce in the same way, I'm, well, I'm a chaplain very part-time, but um, I really enjoy the stimulation of hearing what everybody's doing and, and um, Great. Yeah, and um, please, uh, we'll, we'll probably try to do about three of these each year. And uh, if, if you do have ideas for topics, uh, please don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, you're, you're, you're more than welcome to be part of actually putting one of these on, like, for example, facilitating one of these gatherings or, or, or finding a guest speaker and, uh, and connecting us and, and helping us coordinate the uh, uh, time for the guest speaker to, to present. So a lot of different ways to do this. And uh, I suspect most of our, these gatherings will be virtual. But there may be opportunity, maybe every year or every couple of years, maybe we do something physical where we go and, and meet at, uh, at a city and uh, uh, for, uh, for a gathering and, and just having a great time with each other. So a lot of different ways to, to do that, uh, to build community and, and to also provide you all with, with good, solid, actionable content that you can take back and, 
and, and put to use and, and really help you in, in, your, in your daily work. Good. Okay. Um, let, I, will, I will process this recording. We'll get it posted. I'll, I'll send out the, the text, uh, the, the, the content of the chat as well. And uh, uh, what I want to do is close with a benediction. It's, it's from a book uh, called Power Lines, and it's a collection of Celtic prayers uh, in, in different arenas. And, and this one is, uh, is from uh, Prayers for the Workplace. So it, we'll use this as our benediction for the evening. Mighty God, holy and strong one, give us strength to do what you would have us do. Deliver us from lack of purpose. Free us from confusion of mind. Save us from loss of integrity. Maintain in us vision and ideals. Sustain our openness and generosity. Help us to continue to work for you that we may serve you all our days. Mighty God, holy and strong one. Amen. Thank you all for coming, and uh, we'll uh, we'll stay in touch. Don't forget about the annual gathering that's uh, that will happen on the 16th of February. We hope you can make it. They're they're really working hard on the content for it. It'll be it promises to be a, a really great one. So thank you all, and and have a great uh, rest of your weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, Thanks bye, everyone. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you. Nice to meet Thank you, too. You. See you, Kathy.